Hi, Rich Wagner here again. And if you've been following along, you know we're talking about the three critical components to a good photograph. We talked about perfect focus yesterday. Tomorrow we're going to talk about good composition. But today we're going to talk about number two, which is proper exposure. Now, we said perfect focus, but we say proper exposure. Why don't we say perfect exposure? Well, because exposure is something that you have to use your judgment on a little bit. But I'm going to give you two kind of common sense definitions. The first is, whatever the important part of the picture is, needs to be exposed so that it's visible and has good detail. Generally, that means we don't want to overexpose the picture and blow out highlights. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. The second is, and this is very important, that the picture has impact, that the way it's exposed and the way it's composed, subject to tomorrow's lesson, um, the picture has impact. It really has pop, let's say. So let's talk about how we achieve that. Let's go to the computer. Let's use as our examples some of the pictures that Bonnie's uh, shown us in the last couple of days. Here's one with peppers. And, uh, it, it, you know, if you use your common sense and look at it, A, it's pretty bright. Uh, not necessarily a bad thing, but look at all these white, uh, we would call them blown out highlights. And that's the result of the flash uh, being too bright on this picture. Now, those are, can be very disturbing in a photo because instead of concentrating on the peppers in the picture, your eyes drawn to those very bright highlights. How do you know they're there? Well, you can set your camera so that it will show on that little screen in the back the overexposed highlights in a photograph. And uh, again, you're going to have to dig the manual out, but you can find them. And generally that happens, they'll either blink or they'll go bright red or something. So the back of your camera, when you set it for that, is going to look like this. Can you see the red blinking off and on there? And when we look at that, we can tell that we have blinking highlights or overexposed highlights. And that picture's too bright. And the solution for that is to change the exposure. Now, how do we change the exposure? Once again, we're back to our manual. And all cameras have, and I mean all cameras, digital, have an opportunity for you to adjust the exposure. And it's called exposure compensation. You can see it right here. On this camera, it's a button on the top. And by pushing that button and turning the dial, I can adjust my exposure. I can reduce it, underexpose intentionally, or increase it, overexpose. And almost every camera uses this plus minus square as the symbol for where that exposure compensation is. So if you'll go to that, you can underexpose it or overexpose it and make sure that you don't have too many blinking highlights. Now, notice I didn't say no blinking highlights. I said too many. And what too many is, is kind of up to you to be the judge of. But let's look at another photo here. And this is one of, of the bark on a tree. And I'm going to show you the blinking highlights on that photo. Can you see them? There's one here. And there's one here. And there's one here. And there's a little one down there. Do we care about those? Not at all. They're perfectly acceptable. They don't interfere with the photo. They don't pull our eyes away from the important part of the picture. So proper exposure is making sure that the part of the picture you care about is visible, has detail, and that it's not overexposed to the point where you have uh, really a disturbing, overexposed, blinking highlight kind of look. Let's take another look at that picture of the bark on the tree. 
And remember we talked about having pop, that, that the second part of proper exposure is that it has some impact, it has some pop. So if you've got a stopwatch, um, check this out. This is real time. I'm going to give this picture some pop. And I do that by raising my black point and I'm going to give it a little bit of extra vibrance. So what was that? Five seconds? And we went from this, a flat photo, exposed okay because we didn't have blinking highlights, to this, which is a properly exposed photo because it also has pop. Let's go over here to that, uh, that kind of ice on the window photo. Same thing. Is it properly exposed? Well, it doesn't have any blinking highlights, but it also doesn't have any pop. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other one. I'm just going to bring my black slider up a little bit, and I'm going to adjust the contrast on this picture. And we've gone from this to this, and we have pop. So proper exposure is a combination between making sure that you don't have excessively overexposed highlights, that the parts of the picture that are important to you are exposed so that you can see detail. And here's another one. And you know, we have very good detail in this little plant. And that the photograph is, has impact. That it really conveys a, a feeling of a well done photo. Most of the pros I know use a program called Lightroom. It's by Adobe, the makers of Photoshop. Uh, we used to use Photoshop extensively. Lightroom is much faster and easier. And there are a couple of tweaks in Lightroom that will let us, let us take a well-exposed photo. And this is a good example of that. And with just a couple of little tweaks, generally that take less than 10 seconds, give it a little more pop. And, um, and we went from this to this. That little bit of change can give us a much more saleable photograph. How many of my photos do I change by using some of these tools? Well, on the keepers, on the ones that I'm going to sell, whether they're fine art, whether they're for magazines, um, the percentage of photos that I make changes like this to for exposure is 100%. 100%. Give it a try. I think you'll be very happy with the results. But, you know, take it easy. Don't overdo it. But every photo can use a little pop. This is Rich signing off. Tomorrow, composition.